Good evening, everyone. This is a TILT webinar, that's Technology and Language Teaching webinar, with Marie Aliro and Natasha Witham. And it's using gamification, culture and art to motivate language learners. Oh, I'm sorry, I've made a mistake on that one. Um, I am Helen Myers. I'm the chair of the London branch of the Association for Language Learning. Um, we always at these webinars recognise the contribution of Heike Philp and Linguascope, who've helped to set things up by our various websites and giving us technical um, advice. But in particular, we always at this point ask Joe to introduce himself. Um, he's the person who's brought all of these people together, who's brought the programme together. Uh, Joe, would you like to give us a few words now? I'd love to, Helen. Thanks ever so much. So, yeah, we're delighted. Uh, this is, I think, the 51st uh, webinar that we've done since uh, March, since lockdown uh, started. Uh, and uh, we're in for a real treat this evening. No pressure, but we're in for a real treat this evening, all about uh, creativity and gamification and escape rooms and, and lots of fantastic ideas. So, yeah, so I'm an independent language consultant. I've been supporting language teachers for many years, but particularly during lockdown, I've been everyone's best friend, I suppose. And, uh, and I'm, I'm more than happy to do that. I love helping people for free, but at the same time, I do need to make a living as well. And so in the chat, I have uh, shared a document of 18 example sessions. If you would like any help around remote teaching or hybrid teaching, have a look at that. There'll be, there's plenty of ideas there. And if you're interested, you can contact me and we can chat about the possibility of me uh, doing some paid webinars for your department, be it a one-off webinar or a series of webinars. I'd be more than happy to help. Thank you. Over to you, Helen. Lovely. And of course, welcome to you. I can see that we're already up to, I think, um, nearly 70 participants, which is great, isn't it, for a holiday Thursday evening. This is going to be very popular, I'm sure, and it will be recorded. Um, I'd like to talk about ALL just to encourage you to join. It's at this point, you know, the, you know what happens now. If you're in ALL, please tell us all that in the chat. Tell us that you're a member and tell us why it's a good thing to belong to an association. If you're in another country and you belong to an association, it'd be great to know which association you belong to. because I think it's lovely. Part of what's happened through these webinars is that we've got to know other associations um, and we've col collaborated, so that's great. Um, if you're not a member, please join us. Um, you get a discount, 10% discount on membership if you use this code, webinar10. Um, on the website, you'll see all of the benefits you get. The main thing for me is feeling that you are part of a community. Um, and the, you know, you'll, you'll get emails, you'll get communications. When we are able to meet each other, we have a lovely conference, which happens normally in April, and you get a very good um, magazine, which comes every term. So it's, it's great to be a member. Um, there will be all of the webinars um, are available on Joe Dale 100 YouTube channel um, and I've done a page for each webinar where you'll have a link to Joe's channel plus the chat and any pictures we've taken um, and any PowerPoints and that sort of thing. So coming soon. Do you want to just tell us about this, Joe? Yeah, I'd love to. So on Saturday, uh, the 22nd, so in two days time, we have Priscilla Martini, who's going to be coming to us um, live from Brazil. Um, and I've known Priscilla for a number of years uh, through the IATEFL conference. So IATEFL is English as a foreign language event, which normally happens every year uh, in a different venue around uh, the UK. Um, obviously didn't happen this year for obvious reasons. Um, and so Priscilla is, a, is an expert in special educational needs and uh, she's also an English teacher. And so she is going to share some tips and strategies around um, how we can support um, children with special educational needs uh, either in a remote teaching context or a hybrid context. So lots of really interesting um, strategies and, and what have you, uh, such as using Minecraft and things like that, as well as some other ideas. And then on the 29th of August, uh, literally a week later, we have um, the amazing Isabel Jones, who I'm sure we all know, uh, who's going to be looking at um, how um, music can be used to enhance language learning, um, complementing the session that we had with uh, Paco Fernandez, uh, which was back in May, I think, of this year. Um, and so, uh, again, there's going to be lots of exciting and interesting ideas. If you've never seen Isabel before, you're in for a real treat as well. I was thinking that's rather nice. It is a Saturday, but music somehow goes with Saturday night, doesn't mm. it? So, and mm. then the other one, which I've just put up there, which is not a tilt one, um, but it would be great if you could let anybody know in your school who's starting um, in September, um, AWL is putting on a webinar for NQTs, for newly qualified teachers, people about to start back. That's on Tuesday, the 25th of August. 
So we have a speaker who is going to be talking about her experiences, but we've got other um, ITT initial teacher trainer providers who are going to be there as well to help. So please do pass that on to um, anybody you know who's starting teaching or come along to give your advice as well. If you'd like to do that, that would be great. So we have an etiquette. In summary, we're professional and kind. We never have any problems with these, do we, Joe? These no. webinars have been great. We haven't found that any, but we always put this bit in just in case, but it's been lovely. People always understand totally about the need to be kind and generous and supportive, which is great. And we always do have a disclaimer that AWL London is very happy to host speakers and participants free of charge, but speakers and participants are responsible for what they say. I always feel it's a bit like doing terms and conditions apply when I say that. <laughs> it's something we have to say. So I do apologize. I did a, you can probably see I did a global replace of titles. So all the way through there, you've got a mistake of woodge learning. Um, but anyway, over to Joe now um, to introduce our speakers. Lovely, fantastic. Well, as I've said, I've been really looking forward to, to this evening's session. Uh, we have uh, Marie and Natasha talking about lots of creative ideas um, around, as you can see, gamification, culture and art. But there's going to be a real focus on escape rooms, uh, the use of creative ideas around Bitmojis, lots of games that you can incorporate within escape rooms. So we've had a couple of sessions around escape rooms and um, those have proved very, very popular with the, um, um, the recordings on YouTube. Um, the first one um, around Gina Lee, uh, which we're going to be having a look at uh, again tonight has been watched over a thousand times. So there's a real interest amongst language teachers. And um, I can say hand on heart, the examples I've seen that Marie has has shared in various places on Twitter, on Facebook, and also on Esmeralda Salgado's Padlet have been incredible, inspirational. So I, I know that she's feeling a little bit nervous tonight, but she, there's no need to do to, to feel nervous at all because um, you're doing amazing things. And I, we can't wait to see both of you talking about all these creative ideas and getting awfully creative and excited because language teachers normally are very creative in general, but this will just push everyone to the next level and I'm sure encourage people to... Uh, um, to, to try out some of these creative ideas. So over to you. I don't know who's going to start. It's going to be like a lovely um, double act, but a little bit like myself and Helen. Yeah, but over to me. whoever's going. Okay, over to <laughs> Marie. And thank you ever so much for agreeing to do this. And if I could ask, um, also if you could now, everybody could turn their webcams off. We'd love to see you. We'd love to see you at the end, and we take a nice picture. And just before anybody speaks, I'm going to just make sure what I'm about to do is I'm going to click mute all and make it that you can't unmute yourself, just for the sake of making sure that nobody embarrasses themselves, I suppose. However, when I do that, I might mute the presenters, which is why, if you can just bear with me, I'm gonna see what happens, and then I might have to unmute them before we start. So I'm about to click where it says mute all. I'm going to uncheck allow participants to mute, mute themselves. Um, so now I'm going to, sorry, ask, you to unmute and Natasha. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, Helen, I've just had a message on, on Twitter from Miki on YouTube saying that she um, was wondering whether we started or not. She was the same person last time. I don't know if uh, there's an issue around the YouTube stream. It is working. I mean, I, I okay. as well, I've got, looks like, oh, do you know what? Again, it's just preview. It comes as preview and I've got to click again. Okay, I do no apologize. So we're all learning here. That we're all learning. Happen. So all I click good. it. So it's now working. Thank you very much for That's that. That's okay. No problem. Apologies to Miki. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. Okay. Shall I start? Yeah, please. Yeah. Thank all right. You. Great. Okay. So today, um, Natasha and myself are going to talk about using gamification on culture to motivate language learners. So my name is Maria Liro and I work in Beats Prep School uh, in Eastbourne. Uh, and I'm really interested in using technology in the classroom and creativity. Uh, I met Natasha uh, because I was leading the IAPS District Free Meeting in October uh, 2019. So that's a meeting for uh, all the head of languages in prep school in the southeast and uh, so we met up and we had very similar ideas and we uh, both really enjoyed escape rooms so we've shared a lot of a lot of um, ideas we've actually only met once but we've been in touch <laughs> uh, especially in the lockdown to share ideas so first Natasha is going to speak to you about why using escape room, uh, give you some quotes and showing you an example of um, physical escape room. Hi Marie and thank you everyone for joining us this evening. I'm just going to start sharing my screen now. 
I'm just going to scroll back. Apologies for this. Don't want to spoil any surprises. Has my video gone off, Helen? Yes, it's gone off. Okay. I will sort that now. Apologies for the delay, everyone. Okay. Bear with me. Sorry about this. I'm trying to get back into my presentation now. There we go. Okay, we're all good. Okay, so thanks again, everyone, for joining tonight. I'm going to start by talking about why you could or should use escape rooms in teaching. So the aim of my introductory session is to, to give you an overview of why and how to use escape rooms and to show some examples of physical and digital escape rooms that I've made. As Marie said, we've really bounced off each other with the whole escape room thing and it's been amazing collaborating with Marie. So why use escape rooms? Some of you, the fact you've joined tonight, you may already be big escape room fans. Um, they're highly motivational, current, they link well to Google Classroom and they could easily be used with your pre-existing Google Forms and quizzes, which you might have created during the remote period. They're highly suitable to engage remote learners and they're appropriate for all subject areas. They also can be used nicely to encourage collaboration between staff. Both Marie and I have done year eight whole school escape rooms, which have worked really, really well. So getting started with escape rooms, optional visit an escape room. This is where my interest started training this web webinar, online videos and articles, and really importantly, decide on a theme or story which pulls the whole thing together. Okay, so the first escape room that I did was in 2019 for the European Day of Languages. So what you can see on your screen now are a few pictures. So the first picture you can see is the timer that I put on as the pupils came into the room. So the overall global theme was El Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead. So I had different stations around the room that the pupils visited and you're gonna actually see a few very short videos of the children during the escape room task. So the first one, you're gonna see a little video a bit later on of the countdown task. And that was, you can see in the second photo, the decorations. The third photo shows you an invisible word search that I created on animals using an invisible pen and UV torch. So that worked really well. And obviously any good escape room, a physical one has a variety of locks. So the one you can see on my suitcase there, or rather my daughter's suitcase, is a letter lock. So that one had a word, the word was noche. They had to work out the word um, to unlock the case. So the key components were the atmosphere, video and decorations, the task types, the UV torch word search and puzzle pieces, which you'll see a photo of a bit later, I think, and the locks that I've mentioned. I also had a lolly stick activity. So the equipment, I had a promotional video and a timer with the atmospheric video, excuse the typo there, the locks, the UV torches and pens, a blank jigsaw and a plastic cauldron. Okay, so here are some photos. So in the first picture on the left there, you can see that section was to do with um, El Colegio. So it was something like a ghost school and the children had to rearrange the lolly sticks to find the different subjects in Spanish. And then that's also depicted in the middle picture. On the right hand side there, you have a really nice skeleton that I got from the drama cupboard or actually I got the coffin from the drama cupboard I got the uh, skeleton online and then what I did was I labeled the body parts and one of them was spelt incorrectly and that was the puzzle in that section was to find which word was spelt incorrectly so I had manos spelt as monos meaning monkey so that was the word that they had to find okay so Marie if you could now show the first video which was the video promotional video that i made using imovie thank you marie sounds not coming now is it marie
when you share the screen, if you click on share computer sound, it should be okay. Yes, yeah, sorry. I forgot That's to right. do that. Don't worry. It's fine. Looks amazing video. Sorry, Marie. <laughs> sorry, no, my fault. I didn't do it properly. <laughs> Can you see it now? Yeah. Yes. 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 Sorry, did I stop it? Uh, doesn't matter, you've shown most of it. That's lovely, Marie. And then, Marie, while you're sharing the screen, if you wouldn't mind showing. So, the next two videos that Marie's about to share with you um, are the children actually in the middle of the task. So, hopefully, they'll give you a sense of how engaged and excited the children were. Back to you, Marie. Thank you very much. So green is five, so here's the five. Negro is also five. How to find something with eight, nine. One, two, three, four. So five is the first one. Here five is the first one. Then something six. So black is five. Then Azul is four. So five, four. Are you sure it's the color, Andre? Yeah, the colour exactly. might tell you the order. What about if you looked at how many letters? Guys, alphabet. Six. Alphabet. No, the six. Cat is three. Where's, is there a alphabet. six? Alphabet. Where's the six? So that was the first one. That was the invisible word search. And then Marie, if you don't mind clicking on the second one, it's extremely short. Yes. Open it. Open it. So that one's super short. Um, so as you can see, I've put a quote there. So I have an email from a parent saying, well done on, um, I need to minimize. Yeah, you need, to, you need to share your screen. This is on my screen now. Okay, thank you. Are we all good? Yes, you're good now. And is the video, is my video on as well? Or do I need to sort that? No, your video is off. Off, okay, I'll sort that. Thank you for your patience, everyone. Okay, all good. Okay, so you can see a little quote on the screen now, um, which came in unprompted from a parent. Well done on your escape room. The word on the street was that the escape room was amazing. All the kids and parents were talking about it at a pickup today. So that hopefully just gives you all a sense of how much fun they can really be for the pupils. Okay, it's not. Oh, here we are. So digital escape rooms using Google Forms. How? They're not as complicated as you might think. And as I said earlier, or alluded to, you could use a pre-existing quiz. I'm going to give you an overview of some examples. And as I said earlier, also, it works brilliantly done collaboratively in the department or with other colleagues. That's one of the beauties of Google. The school I work in is a Google reference school. So we use a lot of Google in our teaching and Google Docs can be used for collaborating and Google Forms. You can all work together in the same form. So that's really good. OK, so how to ensure your task is locked and pupils can't move on to the next lock or room until the answer is correct. 
So Marie shared this article with me. That's how I got started. So there's a link in my slides, which you'll all have access to. Basically, you create your question or task as you normally would in a Google form, and then to turn it into a lock so that they can't go any further in your form until they solve something, you click on the three dots at the bottom right hand corner, which I'm going to show you on the next slide. You then choose response validation, and then you select whether the answer the pupils give is a number or text, then you write the correct answer, and finally you write a notice to pop up if the pupils get the wrong answer, e.g. incorrect, try again, remember capital letters, something like that. So here's a, an example of the Viaje por el Mundo Hispánico that I created, which over 100 teachers asked for access to and have created. Um, so this is an example of what you do. So you can see on the screen, I've put the large arrow on the three dots, which are really important in Google. And then you get the little drop down menu below and you select response validation, which I have circled in red. And then I've shown you an example of one of the ones I did in mine. So they watched a video on food. So I'm going to go into a bit more detail on the actual task a bit later. But they had to, in this particular task, they watched a video and then they had to come up with the first letter of various food items in Spanish. So once I'd done response validation, I then, in the first left hand red circle, I selected text. And then contains, you can change that more or less if you're working with numbers. And then I typed in the correct response. And then on the right hand side, I put in a little error message like, oh dear, go back and check your answers, etc. So here is the MFL example. So it was a journey through Spanish speaking countries. So my story was around, yay, lockdown is over. After staying with your friend in Paris, you go to the Iberia counter where the ticketing officer only speaks Spanish. In order to understand the price of your ticket, you need to practice your Spanish numbers. So there were a variety of tasks. And then when they completed those tasks and completed the first block, they got the picture which said, enhorabuena, you've made it to Madrid Barajas Airport. Then the second task was when they're at the airport, they're hungry and they need to order food and that's the one I just showed you. So each task, there were a variety of tasks. So with Google Forms, you can insert videos, you can create the task yourself. There's lots of different things you can do. And then as I say, once they completed each task, they got a response in the form of a video and a little comment. Okay. Um, next stop. So that was Lima. You bump into a market and you have to order sentences, order, sorry, order food in the market. So the journey took them all around South America. Somebody on the secondary MFL matters did the section on art. That was lovely. That's an example of the collaboration. And then I did a section, no good cultural work could be done without including a bit of music and dance where Spanish is concerned. And then, of course, no language learner is complete without a bit of grammar behind them. So my last section was on grammar. OK, I'm now going to talk very, very briefly about Genially because Marie is far more of an expert on Genially than I am. But I'm going to show you my very basic one for those of you who haven't yet started with Genially. So another on vogue medium for escape rooms is Genially. It's of high appeal for the youth today who are into their gaming, pedagogical gamification, lots of subject specific and or easily adaptable templates. So this is the first one that I did. And unlike Marie's, which are really advanced, having done so many, um, mine is basically I adapted an already existing example. So the first one was a quiz, and all I did was to change the language and the text, basically. Um, washing the dishes, so estoy lavando los platos, and you get a nice, I don't think you'll hear sound very well on um, your version. So I'm just going to go back to home because I'm going to whiz through this. Okay, my second one. Well, again, it's really easily adaptable. You can add audios, which Marie will no doubt talk more about. This one I liked because it was very much like my physical escape. So there's a torch and you, they have to find 
the vocabulary that matches my audio. So I really like that one. So these literally all I had to do was add the audio and change the text. It was as straightforward as that. Then what I did was some, I found, I looked at images on Gmail and I found Giffy's, if that's the right, right way to pronounce it. So all I did here was again, edit the text and insert some Giffy's and it worked quite well. Okay, so that is basically, that basically I think that's all I wanted to show you this evening. If I can just go back to my slides now. Okay. Trying to get back to my presentation now. Sorry, everyone. So do I need to share mine now? I think I've just got one or two more. I'm very nearly done. Let Sorry. me see if I can get moved in. It's fine. Just trying to get back to my slides now. Okay. Just trying to get out of the genially and back to the slides. Sorry, everyone, for the delay. Okay, not managing to close down the genially at the moment. That's my problem. Okay. <laughs> my daughter's in the background saying, hold your thing at the top. <laughs> right, here we go. So I created a video, but I'm not going to show you that this evening. Um, that's it from me, basically. Gracias. Thank you all for joining. I've put my email in the presentation and my newly created Twitter account if you have any questions. Thank you all for listening and I'm going to pass back to the fabulous Marie. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to go back uh, to physical escape room for a little bit. Uh, I've done two examples of phys physical escape room. So this example here is with my year six. I used the character Lulu, which is a famous character in... Um, in the French books and uh, I locked him in a cage with uh, six locks and I did uh, very similar to Natasha, I did a little video with iMovie. I'm not going to show you the video, but you'll have it on my presentation. And then pupils were working in pairs and they had different worksheets to try to work out the codes for the locks. So this one was all about a uh, school subject. So they had to translate the sentences and then using the highlighted letters, uh, work out the number. So for example, this was C I N Q sank, so number five, and all the worksheets were in different order. So they really enjoy doing that. Um, that's my first physical escape room. And then I did one with year eight to revise body parts. So that was the setup in my classroom. Uh, I work in a private prep school, so we've got small classes. So I've got about 12 in the class. So I had two groups and they were sitting in groups. I had a chain with uh, seven padlocks. Uh, they were either with four digit or three digit and they had to work in groups on different worksheets trying to work out the code. They didn't know which task correspond to which lock. So when they found um, combination, they had to try it and try to unlock uh, the padlocks. And that's the example of tasks. So some of them are similar to uh, the one I've done with uh, Lulu. So things like that, working out numbers, uh, looking at letters in French words, uh, breaking a code, um, just understanding some sentences. This one was like a collage with three different teachers. So we had to write down the name of the teachers and work out the number of letters. I always try to make it quite personal to the pupils. Uh, they really enjoy that part of um, when I'm teaching this way. Uh, now I'm going to talk about a Genially escape room. So for those of you who are new to Genially, there's loads of templates that you can use. On the free version, there's a lot of free templates you can use uh, to start with. Uh, the one with a little star, you've got to have a paid version to access them. Um, if you haven't done Genially before, I would advise to do something like that because you get your head around how it works. And I quickly moved on to create my own Genially from scratch. And uh, I, for example, in this one, I, may, I embedded learning app activities, YouTube videos, voice recordings. So I'll just show you a little bit. I'm not going to show you everything, but I'll send it to you. So this is for year five, beginning of a year. We're just going to do something very easy, like revising all the greetings and then looking at geography of France. So that's like going on a little adventure, a little story. 
Ah, bonjour. Euh, où est le reste de la classe Ils sont en retard. Bon, ben, on commence. Bla, 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 bla. Oh, sorry. Could you hear the sound? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought I wasn't doing it properly, so I stopped it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't worry, Marie. Fantastic. Okay, okay. so... Uh, so then you fall asleep in the lesson. This is not something that happens in my lesson. <laughs> And then it's like going on a little adventure. So you've got to find some clues in the room. Natasha, can you mute your microphone? Sorry. Uh, so in this one, you you end up in a in a classroom, in an art classroom at the back of art classroom, and you've got to find the date and where you are. So pupils have to find some for some clues. So you just click on things. So that's. 10 juin 2016, or you've gone back um, four years in the past, and then you find information here that was Saint Etienne, so that's where I'm from. So again, I'm trying to make it quite personal. And then they go, uh, they carry on, and they meet somebody at reception, they talk to them, and they do activities like learning apps where you've got to match up sound. Ça va? So ça va goes with ça va bien, merci. And they, at the end of this activity, it tells them to click on the R to carry on. Then they just carry on. Je suis désolée. And there's loads of different activities, so you go around the school. Okay, so that's one I made from scratch. I've done quite a few from scratch. So I would advise to do first the template, and then you can try from scratch. But now I've discovered new, um, new things you can use in your Genially. Uh, so, for example, Locky is uh, to create digital locks online. So you've got, you can create uh, number locks, uh, color locks, anything you want, and then you can link it to uh, a picture or to a video when it unlocks, can link to anything. So that's quite a good one to use. The only problem is with this one is uh, it doesn't work on iPads or phones. So you've got to use it only if you're using computers. Now, I've discovered a French website called Scape, and all their instructions at the moment are in English or Spanish, and the tutorial are in English and, or, or Spanish, and they've got loads of different tools you can use to improve your Genially, to, to create different activities in your Genially. And I'm going to, uh, I'm working with uh, Julia, and I've seen she's here. I haven't met her yet, but I've seen she's in a, in a, in the webinar and we are going to work together and translate all of these instruction and do tutorial in English for English teachers. So they do things like DND, which is drag and drop. I'm going to show you this one today. I'm not going to show you all of them because there's loads of different things. It's, it's really, really good. G-Code, Le Quiz, Tapus Chris, so they're all French names, uh, R&D, uh, Timer and Post-it Notes. So today I'm going to concentrate on DND, which is drag and drop. So I'm going to show you three examples I've made. So there's a little video here, uh, which I use to, uh, to learn how to do it. I'm not going to show it to you now. I'm just going to show you uh, live how to do this. So that's a drag and drop. So I've got two boxes. I've got some words and I've got to drag them in the correct box. And you only get the congratulation message when you've got all of it right. So for example, if I put this one in there, nothing would happen. But as soon as I put it in there, the congratulation message appears. So you could have, if you're doing an escape room, you could have this congratulation message showing you the clue or one of the numbers for your lock. That's another example for drag and drop. You've got to drag the words in the correct spaces. And again, if you don't drag them in the correct space, it's not going to show you the congratulation message. So if I had this here, and this here, it's not going to work. And you've got to drag them in the correct space. So that's really helpful to, um, to do more things in your Genially. And that's another example of a drag and drop, just collecting the suite. So that's, this one is for my little ones, for my year two. And I would probably count the suites as I put them in or I get them to put them in. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to use it yet. And again, the message appears when you've got all of them in there. So 
So I'm going to show you today how to do this um, drag and drop. So to do that, you need a template from Scape, and I've put, uh, I've put a link so you can download the template and you can save them in your Genially. So the template for drag and drop will look like this. Just this part is the template to do a drag and drop activity. So you would just copy this page and you've got objects and you've got uh, target, Sible in, in French is target, so that's Sible. So at the moment, everything is in French, but Julian and I will translate it so it will be easier for people who don't speak French to understand how to do this. So that's the page to create your drag and drop. So I've prepared my pictures there. So you would obviously have to uh, insert your pictures from their image. So I've prepared four words. So the four words are the objects. I've prepared two boxes, which are the target, because I want the words into the boxes. And that's my congratulation message. So on that page, on this side, you've got the object. I need just four objects. So I'm going to get rid of the others. Like this. And then each object is going to be linked grouped with one of these O1, O2, so Stilo. And to group them, you just do that. Group, group, crayon is O2. And I'm going to group it. Gom, O3, I haven't put it here. Regle. O4. Okay, and these are my targets. So object one and object two, you need to go in target, uh, target one. So, sorry, in, uh, <laughs> sorry, object one and object two, you need to go in box one. So C1 on C2, target one on two, so that's the target for object one on two, will need to be uh, linked with this box. So I'm grouping that, and then I'm grouping C3 and C4 with this box. So that's my targets, that's my objects. I'm going to bring my objects on the page. You can put them wherever you want. Now, what I need to do is for the congratulation message to uh, to appear when this is done, I need to change that script. So instead of the X, I'm going to put four because there are four objects. And I'm going to copy that script. And then I'm going to go to insert other, and I'm going to create it as a iframe. So there it is, that's my script, that's that little four there. For those of you who are not familiar with Genially, that might be a little bit difficult, but if you're familiar with Genially, uh, and then that A goes there, and I need to link my congratulation with the four and the A. So if I do this, and I group them together, There we go. If I do a preview, now it should work. So if I put my, oh, I've done something wrong because the object needs to be in the front, otherwise it's not going to work. So I'm going to put my objects in the front. So to put in the front is this one, put in the front. And now I'm not doing a good job because I'm not putting them on the page. There we go. Okay, preview. Un stylo, un crayon, une gomme, une règle, and then my, oh, my congratulation message needs to be in the front as well. So there's lots of little things. So if I put that in the front, uh, it would appear in the front, but you see the idea. <laughs> okay. Right. So that's how to do DND, which is one of the tools of Scape, and loads of the Scape tool work in the same way. You've got to group things together. Uh, yeah, and then it just, you can do loads of different things. So of escape tools, I just wanted to show you a few. R&D is uh, to do random orders, so like picking a card or a dice or something like that. So recently I've done uh, this double game, 
with R&D. So it's like a set of cards. And then when you click on it, it just choose different cards. So you can do a double game in class. So it took me quite a long time to do this one because not because of the um, technology, but because I really struggled with working out where the pictures should be. Uh, G-Code is one to create a code. I'm just going to show you an example. And if you don't use a scape tool for, to create a, call, a code on Genially, you've got to do loads of different slides to do it. So that's, that makes things a lot easier. So for example, 1, 3, 5, 8, just clicking on there, 1, 3, 5, 8, ouvert. Uh, so that's G-Code, timer and post-it. Uh, I put a little video there to show you how to include it on your Genially. The post-it note uh, is to write notes as you're doing your escape, your escape game. This is very useful. So I'm just showing you, that's an example I did for a studio module. So you've got 15 minutes to find the five letter password. So if I press play, the 15 minutes start, at the end of the 15 minutes, uh, the screen will get black and you can't carry on. And that's the post-it note where you can write uh, code number one, and just write your notes as you go along. So this is very useful. So in this one, I put loads of um, activities from Scape. So for example, this, was made with le quiz, and you just have to write the answer, which was Thomas in this case, I just remember, we have to watch a video. So there's loads of different little activities, so you can have a look at that. Uh, there we go. So I put some links there to uh, the Scape website, uh, and loads of templates they are doing. Other cool stuff on Genially that you can do, so I've created my Bitmoji classroom on Genially. Uh, in the summer term, I created my classroom on Google Slide, but I prefer Genially because of the interactivity. I find it easier and then to update, uh, to update it, I find it easier. So I'm just going to show you, I'm not going to show you everything, but I'll just show you the type of thing I've got in there. So if you click on me, you've got all the links I've got. This is going to be really useful in September because when we go back, we are not uh, going to have our own classroom. We've got to move around because the children are going to stay in their bubbles. So when I go to, my, to all the different classroom, if I want to have access to the months, I've got it, the days of the week, the numbers, everything I use every day. So in my classroom, I've got automatic date, automatic time. So this is integrated as iframe. I've got uh, videos, websites, songs, stories, a model exercise book, a calendar, a uh, random name generator. So I've got everything together. So it will make my life easier when I have to move around the classroom. So I just wanted to show you uh, the model exercise book. So that's what I'm going to do, for example, year four. As we go along, I will update what they've got, what we do in the exercise book. So anybody who's not in school, can check what we've been doing. So I'm thinking maybe taking pictures of uh, the board, if I use the board, uh, uh, screenshots of worksheets, anything like that. And the other thing I wanted to show you on that was the amazing work. So I was going to put for each uh, year group, if they do a really nice piece of work, I'm just going to uh, put a picture on there so they can have a look at different um, people's work. So there's loads of different things. I've got links to Google Classroom, uh, storybooks. Um, I've got songs there. So if I've got time in the lesson, I could uh, always use my classroom to, to find an activity to finish the lesson. Also on um, Genially, you can do things like uh, board games, very easy to create. That's a template, that's a free term template. So you could do that. You can do things like, uh, this one was Shoot the Clown, but I've changed it with my Bitmoji, again, to make it a bit more personal. And that's, that's very, very easy to make. It's just templates. So that's about it for Genially. And I wanted to talk as well about cross-curricular ideas, and especially with art. 
Uh, I'm very keen to do art activities and creative activities in my, in my classroom. So first thing I wanted to share with you was uh, Ben 9 is something I've shared a few years ago on the Facebook page. He's a Belgium artist and he created the concept pencil versus camera. So he's mixing uh, drawings and photography. And I've used this concept to do uh, loads of work on Paris monuments. So I've used pictures of Paris monuments uh, with a little piece of paper and, and pupils have to be creative and uh, draw something. Uh, it can be as crazy as they want. And it was with a paragraph about Paris. So Ben works a lot. Oh, I've also done, sorry, um, about clothes because that one, that's one of his uh, original design. So I've used that in, uh, in my lesson. He, we've done a Skype interview with him. Uh, is uh, I know Ben because he studied in Hastings, and I live in Eastbourne, south of England. So I, I met him uh, before he was famous, and uh, so we've done a Skype interview with him. And the children showed him their work. He gave them some feedback, and we because he's from Belgium, we also asked him about numbers in Belgium because they are different. So it was very very good culturally for for the children. Um, he has been working a lot with different schools uh, all around the world. So if you were interested, you could contact him. So I've put his detail on there. And he's sharing, um, that's a website, he's sharing with, uh, with people some templates that you can use. So that's work is done with different schools. And if I go down, so yeah, he's sharing these templates. And I've shared my templates about the Paris Monument. And that's from my school, this one. So there's different, different schools. A lot of it is from art lesson, but I think it can link very well with languages. And the last thing I wanted to share with you is a similar idea. Uh, is the artist is called Shamek Bluey. He's a Jordanian illustrator and fashion designer. And that's his design. He does cutouts and then he takes pictures of a different landscape. So in my lesson, I've used the templates and we've done some design and then the children had to describe um, clothes and they really enjoy doing that. That was very, very creative. And that's, that's it for me. So I'll stop sharing my screen. Have you got any question you want to ask us? We do have some questions. That was absolutely amazing. Um, oh, thank you. Well, there's been amazing <laughs> feedback in the... Uh, in the chat, I'm not surprised, but it's just lovely seeing um, seeing that the examples, um, yeah, in, in the way that you showed them, oh, yeah. So let's let's look at some of the questions. We've got. Uh, yeah, sorry, I couldn't questions. read the I couldn't read the question as I was. Yeah, going. don't worry. <laughs> well, what I've done is I've copied um, them into a, a Google Doc. So the first one, well, two questions are quite similar. So the first one is, uh, you have clearly put considerable preparation into these activities. Would you say the outcomes are worth the time input? engagement was clearly high. What would you say about that, both of you? I would say definitely yes, because the children remember, uh, especially the physical escape room, my, the children have been talking about it for a really long time and they remembered the words because they were, they were so engaged in the activity. And for me, even if it takes me a long time, this is the best part of my job. I love creating resources and mm. it doesn't matter if it takes me time. I know some people, don't want to spend too much time but i'm going to reuse it again and again yeah and it's fabulous seeing how you've been really creative and used other platforms and then pulled that into genially i mean i think julia morris on a tweet i think yesterday or the day before was saying you've really taken genially to the next level which i i you know yes i've been in touch agree. yeah i've been in touch with julia and we are going to work together to translate these uh, escape tools we've so, we've already started she's done a lot <laughs> yeah yeah, I love that drag and drop that activity. That's absolutely brilliant. Fantastic. What about you, Natasha? How do you feel about the sort of the dichotomy between engagement and uh, time uh, input for the teacher? I think uh, what Marie said was spot on. Um, one of the whole school escape rooms I did, the children show how much it engages them and what they get out of it. They're really determined to solve those tasks. The year eight whole school one, some children spent over three hours on it. So, I mean, I can't think of many tasks that children would spend three plus hours on. So, um, and obviously they have to solve it to go to the next part of the task. So I think there's clear learning there because if they, and we, 
the way I did it was I was in a Google Meet in the background so that if they got stuck, you know, we could help them as, as they mm. went along. So that was a really useful way of doing it. Yeah, that's brilliant. Absolutely. Yeah, it's just inspiring. That's great. Um, so yeah, we, some, yeah, go on. Sorry, Marie. Sorry, uh, we did. Uh, we, I also did a year eight because of a year eight, our, uh, our leavers. Uh, so we did a year eight one with all the departments. So every department in the school provided one task and the children were in a smaller group, in Google Meet, to, to work out. And it worked really well to work with other departments as well. Awesome. Now, a similar question, <coughs> which is uh, the following. I'm curious to know from the presenters how long it takes to set up one of these exercises. I can imagine that a whole escape room takes time to conceptualize you were talking about the importance of having a good story which i've heard from other people talking about escape rooms uh, and to set up but just for a short exercise in a lesson how much time are you spending and again i suppose once you're more familiar with the tool you do things more quickly but what would your response be to that maybe marie would you like to start and then we'll ask natasha uh i definitely it took definitely a long time at the beginning because when, when I, I didn't know what I was doing with Genially, it took me a long time to, to do it. But now when I get an idea, I just ca I can do it and I can picture it and, and it doesn't take me that long. But uh, I so, think, I've, yes. So, uh, so approximately, I mean, we don't want to scare people off, but approximately at the beginning, how much time would you say to do your first Genially? Because uh, normally people say, oh, I mean, I think Helen as well was saying that, uh, oh, it took me ages and ages and ages to make this. They really enjoyed it. But I, I would, and I think Jane Bassnett as well said, it, oh, it took me ages to make my first one. I'd have to question whether I can find the time to do this. So it'd just be nice if, to, to hear. If you, use, if you use a template from Genially, it won't take long. It will take you 20 yeah. minutes, 30 okay. minutes maybe. But then if you want to do your own, my first one I did by myself, it took me days. I was working every day and I had ideas coming up. So I can't, I can't tell you how long exactly, but. <laughs> sure. Sure. I would, I would agree. You, yeah. yeah, I'd agree with Marie. Um, I showed you all earlier the basic template that I adapted, and that didn't take very long. It was like editing a PowerPoint, like we share and adapt resources elsewhere. And I think some of the fantastic ones that Marie and other people have done, they've made available for people to adapt. That's right, isn't it, Marie? Sorry, I was reading something. <laughs> <laughs> some of you, the ones that you've created, you've made them publicly available so people can edit them haven't you yes so you can make them as reusable so all of mine are reusable amazing so, yes yeah. and then marie's done all the hard work i don't know where she finds the time to sleep <laughs> sometimes um, <laughs> but then it shouldn't take other people long to adapt her fantastic resources and as she said totally agree once you get the swing of it like riding a bike you get quicker and slicker and with the google forms which i focused on um, if you're familiar with Google Forms, all you need to do is add response validation and come up with some kind of thing at task that ties it all together, really. Yeah, there's just, yeah, great stuff. Okay. Um, oh, uh, uh, quite, a, quite, well, I find it quite an amusing question. Uh, where, do you go, where do you go to get your Bitmoji to get into such great poses? <laughs> You actually type the word pose, P-O-S-E, and are. There we then are. it comes up with it comes up with different pose. <laughs> Fantastic, yeah. So if you you can either put in um, if you use phrase, the yeah. uh, Chrome extension. That's right. The Chrome yeah. If you and the Chrome extension, you that's right. You put in pose, and you get uh, and you get lots of the characters appearing, but without the text as well. Although you could use a tool like remove.bg if you want to remove.bg to yes. remove text from a from a bitmoji yeah it's fabulous um, and then the last question we have which i think was sort of referred to in the chat as well can you do everything you showed us in the free version or do you have to have one of the paid versions to to do this no you can do in the free version everything awesome. i've got i've got the paid version but the, you can do everything in the free version the only advantage for the for, for the paid version is you can have folders to organize them and if you want some more templates but if you create your own you don't need the paid version to create your own things Amazing. and the escape the escape tools are free I'm going to send you my presentation in the, in the chat. That'd be amazing if that's okay. I'm sure um, yep. lots of people get their teeth into it. That's amazing. I, I saw that Julia Morris uh, just popped up a minute ago. Julia, do you want to maybe turn your microphone on and your, your video on and maybe ask uh, Hello. Marie or Natasha Hello. a question? Maybe I'm sure you're dying to. Well, I've already been chatting with Marie and she was very helpful in uh, giving me private lessons already. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, Scape uh, definitely... 
uh, gives uh, Junior Lee a whole other level of, uh, of things he can do, like with the matching up and tick the right boxes and so on. I mean, it, it's quite complicated, I find, but uh, mainly that's due to my French as well. <laughs> because once we, yeah. French, so I had to translate it all first to work it out. So hopefully once we've done the translation um, and some examples in English, it will be easier for other people to work it out. Really, all it is is just taking the different formulas that the SCAPE website provides and just grouping it with the object on your page and then it appears at certain points or yes. when certain things happen. So once it's, you get your head around that, um, yeah, it's, it's relatively straightforward. You just need to know what to group where and so on. But yeah. 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 Well, once you've practiced, it's easier. Well, yeah, you've practiced. Yeah. Once you've practiced, it's easier. At mm. first, I thought I can't do it, but I was just concentrating on one tool at a time and mm. getting better with it. And now I can understand. And I saw you, yeah. Julia, working on Telate um, Palan. Uh, I didn't know this one, and then it is very similar. So I think, I think once we've done all the tutorial in English yeah. uh, and all the instruction, people will be able to use it. More yeah. I mean, I would recommend first getting your head around genially and then once you've yeah. made a genial presentation and uh, want some extra things that genially can't do, like what you showed in your presentation that you have to put things in a certain box or fill in a certain word. I mean, that's the main thing I think that would open up a lot of activities, uh, the, the gap fill that you showed that you can just have the mm. password there and then it will give you the, the link to the next page or whatever. Yeah. That's really useful. Yeah. What, yeah. what I think has been particularly amazing about this presentation is the way that it's absolutely taken us to the next level compared to what Carmen Kiros showed us. So Carmen Kiros sort of introduced, I think, maybe a lot of people to Gene Lee mm. and going through the basics and using the templates. And what uh, you've both done so brilliantly is being able to show how if you want to spend the time and you want to get really into it, that you can um, yeah, take, take the ideas to the next level. And I think going through... Um, mm. And then likewise with, with uh, Julia's uh, session with uh, around Google and then having Natasha's compliment that as well. It's just, it's, it's been great. And it's just lovely to hear the way that you've been collaborating together as well uh, prior to this and working together. It's been, been great. There's been a really interesting question in the chat from Denise, which is, do you use this as a whole class activity? In other words, on the interactive whiteboard or have you mainly been doing it remotely recently? Or what would you suggest um, when we go back face to face? What would you suggest? Would you suggest doing this as a whole class activity or would you uh, do it at homework or, or how, would you, how would you set it up? So, so far I've only done it remotely because we, uh, my school was closed and we were teaching online. Um, but I am thinking of doing, using it on my smart board, maybe. Uh, I'm not too sure exactly how I'm going to do it, but loads of activities I can use on the smart board. The escape room, maybe take them to a computer room or set as homework or s check if it works on the iPad because sometimes uh, some of the tools don't work on iPads. Fantastic. I particularly liked your um, emoji, uh, Bitmoji classroom. I thought that was very innovative. And, and um, what one person asked about the the book, I think it was. Uh, I'm not sure. The model exercise book. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I'm going to update it as I go along. And as I, as I do my lesson, I'm going to update what we do. So people who are not coming to school, because we think some people are going to be in quarantine and we won't have everybody in the classroom. So we are going to teach um, online and in the classroom. So I'm going to have a model exercise book so we can see what they've missed. That was an idea I found on a French forum. It wasn't my idea originally, but I thought it was a very good idea. So Incredible. It's lovely that there are people out there who, are, um, I suppose me included, who go out there and do the research on our behalf, as it were, and then pull it all together into a recording so everyone can benefit. It's, it's fantastic. We really appreciate the, the time you spent researching this. There's a, there's a question. Right, from, we just interrupt, just yeah. to make a picture of everybody. Of course, yeah, no problem. I mean, it's been fantastic here because we've had loads of people and pe sometimes people can't stay right to the end, but we've had 74 right up until the last five minutes. So I know some people have to leave. So if you wouldn't mind just for the benefit of having a nice class photo, <laughs> and then we might talk forever, really, I feel, on this. Mm. And, uh, and I've made it so you can all unmute yourselves now if, you'd, if you want to join in. That would be, that would be great. As I saw Denise, she opened up her, so it was a good question there, Denise. So, um, right, so I'll just give you another few seconds to open up your webcam if you're going to do that. And people all can start.
applauding as well. So if you, if you, you now you can open up your audio, you can actually do that, and then we get it like as if we're we're really there. Okay. Photo. Here goes. Well done, Marie. There's one. And keep going. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> photo. And I'm just doing one more. I'm going to the next page. Here's the page two, Tony's at the top there. One, two, three. Lovely. Right, I can stop being appreciative now. <laughs> that was lovely. No problem. So if maybe we can mute our microphones again, if that's okay, just so we don't have any extraneous background sound. So I, I was literally just going to sort of um, do the last question, I think it was, which is just uh, the hey, right? Okay, so. Um, Churchill has, uh, has uh, asked, uh, please could Marie say again where or how she made the virtual classroom with the links to resources? So I don't know if that's something that you shared, uh, Marie, as a, as a reusable no, template. I didn't because it's going to be linked with loads of um, things personal to my classroom. So I, I didn't understand. share it, uh, yeah. but I made it on Genially. And there's, uh, if you go on the group called Enseigner et Étudier avec Genially, somebody's shared some templates on there some ready-made templates so i've used some of that to make my own fantastic i joined but, that yeah. group as well uh, the other that day i can't is, remember if that was yeah i can't yeah, remember if that was off I'll the write, back of I'll your recommendation or or what have you but yeah that's great they are very very good i'll write it down in the chat my big junior awesome so i don't know if there's any other questions but i think we've covered all the questions um let's have a look I think people were just absolutely blown away by it. Mm. Um, and what I really love, I'm loving seeing this. It's obvious to say it, and you've mentioned it, Joe, is the way that people are coming together here because we've mm. now had, um, you know, a few sessions which have touched on escape rooms and you're all getting to know each other. And there's Julia there. And I just feel, you know, Julia has been coming along regularly to our real life tilt sessions and she was due to speak. Um, and, you know, and I was just blown away by what she did last year when I heard her so and it's lovely that you're all getting to know each other and and when people ask can I just say it's when people ask about the amount of time it takes to do things I think part of it is that and Julia and I've discussed this we actually like doing it storytelling I mean I loved creating yeah. stories when I was a kid and I think if that's your thing then actually it's a pleasure doing it isn't it you're not always counting up the hours and thinking oh this is taking me it's you can't do it on a Wednesday afternoon thinking you can use it on Thursday no. but if you've got a few more weeks of holiday <laughs> or at least a few days of weekend I think uh, I think yeah. the lockdown because of lockdown we had more time to to look into mm. it so yeah and then your generosity at making it so that we can just take things and save as and change things slightly that's so good Rob. it's a little bit more difficult now with scape because you can't really just change it with escape tools it's probably easier if you want to use the escape tools to to make it yourself otherwise all the coding is is, is really it's really tricky mm -hmm. somebody wanted to reuse my uh, double activity but it's it's easier just to start from scratch to right. do it yeah. right and I, and I love the way that you create a resources, uh, Marie, for um, a middle school or um, primary uh, age uh, students, because we ha we've had a, you know, a few sort of examples of, of primary um, since we've been doing the Tilt webinars. But I mm. think that was one reason which I thought this was particularly good as well. And I remember, uh, I think it was on a Facebook group when you shared your Gene Lee and I, and, I, and I enjoyed doing the activity and then uh, doing a screenshot to show that I'd yes. done it and all that sort of thing. And it was just... Yeah, it's great fun. So that was my first one, yes. My first yeah, there one we are. With, uh, and I was really princess. inspired. I was really, really inspired. And I thought, oh, wow. And then you just started to churn them out. And I was going, wow, this is, in this is incredible. Absolutely incredible. So it's very inspiring. I think so there's another grateful. question about uh, Scape from uh, Car Caroline. I think she's still not quite sure how to actually okay. get it onto your presentation. I don't know if Marie wants okay. to say something. Yes, I can show you. Uh, did you share the, the link to the scape yes. website? Yes, the scape. So if you go to, if you, my presentation, I've sent my presentation. So if you go to, oh, sorry, I have to go back. And while you're doing that, can I say how lovely it is, these comments, I'm just reading through the thanks to the presenters and to Joe. 
everybody. It's lovely. Right, sorry about that. That's there we right. go. So escape template. So if you click on that, and this uh, lady is from Quebec, and I went to a webinar. She did a webinar about the, the uh, about using Genially uh, and using escape template. She made a template with all. Well, she made this Genially with all the templates from Escape, which is basically what Julie and I are going to do in English. So you would need to click on that link, reuse this Genially. So it will go in your Genially account. And the template I used today was the DND. So I'm going to show you where it is. So that's all the, that's all our template. So I would need to find the DND. That's it, that's the DND V1 one I use. So I use this template. So if you wanted to make your own, you would need to uh, go to your Genially uh, create genially. Just choose a blank presentation. It doesn't matter. Just like, that. and then to get the template from the escape thing, it's not saved in your genially. You do add page, my creation, and then I need to find it here. So that's the. It's called DND. But the way we're going to do it with uh, Julia, Julia had a really good idea. She's going to have different colors for the template, so it will be easier for you to find where they are. So when once we've done that, we will share. With yeah, the idea is to have all the templates in one presentation with the explanations, and then we're going to do some little videos for each one, how to use it as well, so hopefully we'll make it clearer. Is that better, Caroline? Was it Caroline asking this question? Mm. Oh, it's fantastic. And do you, can I just ask, do you actually do escape rooms yourselves? <laughs> uh, I've done a few because I'm a deputy house mistress in my school. So I, I work with the boarders. So we've taken, uh, we take them every year to an escape mm. room. Because I, I mean, just, I, I put a link there for people and I will in the write-up that I have now got addicted to mm. doing them. And I've been up until half past one in the morning sometimes doing these escape rooms, French ones. And I've, you know, and as you do it, so you make friends with other people because you find other people are doing it on Twitter and they give you a bit of help. And I've now got in touch with the person who's developed the one that I got stuck on because I couldn't do it. Uh, yes, I tried it. I couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, you, you really need, because for his, um, you know, the codes are just, you, you've got to understand in it that it's telling you to take every other, every other letter, once from the beginning of the word, then from the end, and then from the... And then you know where you meet people, but it is so, so satisfying when you do it. Mm. Have, have you listened to Escape This Podcast yet? I think no. I told you about it. Do you Did want I to tell you? you were going, going to show me something, weren't you, I think? Uh, no, this is a, a podcast where you listen to the introduction to the story. Yeah. And then they always have guests on there who then have to say, oh, what happens if I press this button? Or what happens if I put in this code? And so on. Mm -hmm. So it's just a... Um, and yeah, an audio escape room. Mm -hmm. But the cool thing is they put their script on their website so you can just download it for free. So for the last two years, I think I've been playing it two or three times a month with some people just over Skype, mm -hmm. um, which is really cool. And it's, yeah, it's just like doing escape room, but the good thing is it's free and you don't have to go out and you can do it in your own time. Yeah. Um, and it takes about an hour as well. So. Oh, I definitely like the link. You should no, organize one, but you need a game master. So one person needs to be the one who reads out well, should we just the script. Do, should we do mm -hmm. one? Let's have yeah. an evening where we so. just do it. Because I think, you know, I'm listening to Are you. Are there any evenings when you're not doing webinars? I think that would be really good. I mean, I think more and more, because really we were all inspired. But again, as you were going through that, and Marie, quite often you think, oh, but I won't show you all that. I won't show you. I think <laughs> so I'd love to actually just play it and do it. And um, mm. but certainly, you know, uh, yeah, as a group of just just for our own entertainment, um, because certainly the, the one that I'm doing, I would love to be just doing it with someone else just to mm. see. Or not can yeah, the teamwork is an important part, really, isn't yeah. it? I think so. Yeah, because the, the one I'm doing, the good thing is that, you know, if you do get stuck and I think this is where we're, 
where I got stuck was that I didn't realise I was meant to go through all of these Andes. There were lots of clues. Mm. Had I gone through those systematically, eventually I just might have been able to understand it. But um, the only thing, my, my concern a bit here, though, is that there are a few mistakes in the French. <laughs> and I'm wondering whether to dare tell the person who's done it, who's obviously a genius, that actually they're just, just the odd thing. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, Marie, I was just wondering with the, the fonts that you, or the, the sort of like the crazy right. text that you had on some of the slides there, did you yeah. use um, a website uh, to create yes, those? Yes, I use uh, Text Giraffe website. Text Giraffe, right. Yeah, okay. it's really good. I'm just sending it. Oh, I can't send it. Oh, I was trying to send to somebody. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I can't send it in the chat. I don't know what I've done. <laughs> okay, if you, if you click on um, everyone, Ah, yeah, should, that's what I've done wrong. Yes, sorry. If you look on everyone, yeah. So presumably then you go to that website, you put your text in, and then you can choose a number of styles, all of which have a transparent background. Is that right? Yes. There's another right. one. But the one I've, I'm mainly using is Text Giraffe. I can't remember the other one uh, I discovered recently. Okay. Uh, somebody on Twitter mentioned another one, but I can't remember what it is. Yeah, this one, one is I, very good. There was one I discovered, which uh, the person was talking about it in the context of Jamboard um because it would work in the same way you just uh, okay. take the text and put it into jamboard again i can't remember it's it might be cooltext.com let me just have a oh yes look. i know this one but it's not the one i was thinking oh, yeah okay. cooltext.com is good okay. but text text giraffe i think is uh, is the best one okay okay that's really that's really helpful and you could use that in anything in powerpoint and google yes. slides and all the rest of it yeah lovely thank you so much that's great Joe, do you think at some point we might have a even if it's not an, a whole webinar, but a lot of people have been showing these um, Bitmoji classrooms, or is it something where really it's best just to say, go to the tutorial and, and work through it? Um, I think it would be good to have a session. I mean, I could do it. I mean, on, yeah. on Bitmojis in general, how you can use Bitmojis. Mm. Um, I think there's been some really lovely examples of Bitmoji classrooms normally using Google Slides. Some people have used ThingLink. I've not, I don't think I've seen a Genially one before. So that was really, really nice to mm. see. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, just just a sort of um, a, 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 a guide on how to set one up. I mean, it takes mm -hmm. a little bit of time, but it's um, it's almost like sort of, well, I, my understanding is not that I've done this personally, that it's a bit like, you know, sort of playing with your doll's house when you were a child, as it were, and sort of like building up your uh, your uh, your um, uh, Bitmoji classroom. But essentially, well, in saying Google Slides, you go into Google Slides, you do a uh, Google image search for... Um, wall and floor that sort of thing mm -hmm. um and yeah you'll find one that you like and then you're then looking for things like bookshelf transparent or um yes. uh, photograph transparent and then you can then uh, superimpose your own content over the top and then link to it um and that's why a lot of people don't they, they can share the basic template but they can't obviously share all the links from a privacy point of view but uh, it's not difficult to do and then you can use as i mentioned earlier a tool called remove.bg which will then remo remove the background from a, a picture let's say there's a sofa that you particularly like but you don't like the background or it has a white background you get rid of the background and then you can then put it into your uh, uh, into your 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 classroom and then as you showed marie you can then have lots of other rooms coming off from the same the, 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 the core um, image, which is really Yeah, nice. I'm going to send you, uh, these are, um, this is a template for different uh, virtual classroom using Genially. So I've just, I didn't make that, I just found it on the, on the forum, but they're quite I useful. Suppose, you know, almost being able to show people you can do it on different platforms, because I think, did you say, mm. Julia, you can put this into uh, OneNote, I mean, for the Microsoft users, Almost if, if we can show how whether you're Microsoft School or Google, this is what you could do or... Yeah, you yeah. can Im embed it in, uh, in a OneNote. Mm. If you just put the link in, and it should ping up underneath the, the window with the yeah. um, Genial presentation. And what about Bitmojis? Are they Because I found that I had to save my Bitmojis as a, an image before it would go on. It, it didn't easily go into a... Microsoft. It does if you do... Uh, if you do the Google Google Chrome extension, hmm. have you got the Google Chrome extension? Yeah. Uh, to get them, okay. so I can get it on the Google Chrome. It's then putting that into the. Um, perhaps I'm doing the wrong thing. Right click, click, click copy. Copy. Yeah, you can maybe you can maybe either drag and drop. You can either drag and drop into PowerPoint if it's. Or right click. Or right click, uh, copy and then paste it. Or 
right click uh, save target as or save image as the wrong thing because i know it's fine in google or in my gmail it all works it's only when i'm putting it into OneNote that i've had to i found i had to make it into an image and then insert it as an image oh i'll have a little play right in the in the chat i've just i'm sure a lot of people know this i put the facebook group bitmoji craze for educators which has i saw the other day over four hundred twenty thousand members <gasps> It's amazing. Very good ideas on this. Yeah. Loads of um, they share loads of templates as well. Yeah, and they've got ni a nice tagging system, so you can click on the tags and then sort of get to the good stuff that you're interested in straight away. Or there's obviously search group box, but if you're there just scrolling through, you, you know you could easily go down a rabbit hole, as it were. But it'd be a fun, creative rabbit hole, but a rabbit hole nonetheless. <laughs> I don't think my students like want to see my face anymore, so <laughs> I wouldn't want to use it. <laughs> Sorry, Natasha, you were think, saying something. Sorry. I think we, um, what I like about Bitmoji is if you change the language on your phone, mm. that you can really easily get Bitmoji in the other languages. So I think that works really well for language teachers. Mm. And in terms of the escape room, yeah, I really recommend if you haven't already, go to a real live one, um, COVID permitting and all that. Um, but there is all, I uh, put in the chat earlier, there's also Lorianne, one of my colleagues who was on earlier, mentioned to me Unlock. She found a company called Unlock. They do kind of board games and they do them in French and Spanish as well. So you get kind of some real physical cards and there's a digital and uh, it connects. You do it probably through an app on your phone and that's really, really cool as well. Amazing. Amazing. Oh. Love it. Games are. I mean, it's a. It is a really good way of learning language, isn't it? Playing games. It's what whenever we go on French exchange, or yeah. we receive people on French exchange, you always say to people, get the board games out, because you know you get to the end where you can't really go on talking about their family and pets and that sort of thing. You actually want to do something, and through playing a game, there's so much language mm. that you can use, isn't there? Like cheat or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> That's great. And I particularly like the, the way you can embed audio in the way that Marie, um, that first example that, uh, that you shared, um, I thought, wow, yeah, I didn't realize you could share, you could mm -hmm. record audio. That's really, really lovely as well. Yeah, you can do that with a free version. So yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Is there anybody else here who, who is using Escape Room who wants to open up their webcam and tell us that they use it? Just wondered. Yeah. Uh, hello. Vanessa? Hi, Vanessa. I'm doing a bit late. I want to ask if any of you has used near Nerpod or PR deck because I have uh, having some investigation about the free version of these two because I found that it's quite interactive. So I want to know if someone is using any of these two. I haven't. I haven't, but I've heard about PR deck being very good, but I haven't used it. I'm sure yeah. Joe has a webinar for that uh, somewhere. Well, uh, <laughs> we had we had a previous um, we had a previous webinar. If you remember that Guillaume did uh, for us, um, uh, oh, which included um, a session uh, or a uh, section uh, about Nearpod. Uh, so I'd recommend that. And then we did have one around Air Deck as well that was right at the beginning, which was Michael's, which I think. Oh, I don't know if someone's got their microphone on, but I think that's here. Vanessa. Is it Vanessa? Okay. Don't <laughs> Okay. That's in the, in the and um, yeah, with Mike, we had Michael Williams right at the beginning who talked about Pear Deck, but um, uh, I still haven't I edited the video simply because I've just been, anyway, I've just been very busy, but I forgot, I apologize for that. But, um, but yeah, but if you go onto YouTube, there's masses of um, uh, uh, tutorials about Pear Deck. And, and yeah, well, the thing about Pear Deck is like, uh, I found. On that if you got like the paid version, you get a lot of stuff, but for the free, I was trying to do one in, some investigation which one will be better, like Nerpod or Perde, yeah. by using only the free version, the thing that they offer. So why, that's why I was asking if anyone has uh, uh, an idea of using like the free version without going to the paid. Yeah. And for example, Nerpod, I know that now they have put like a new feature that is in for language is very good, that you can do interactive videos. It's like you take a video from YouTube and you can uh, embed question in the video and the student can interact simultaneously, which I found very interesting. 
Okay, sorry, it's a bit di difficult to understand because there's background, a lot of background, uh, which is exactly sorry, why we asked people to mute their microphone. Down. I'm going to write down what I was saying. Okay. <laughs> no, I understand. But I mean, I've, I've seen that sort of debate about Pear Deck and Nearpod uh, over a long period of time. Um, yeah, I, I would, uh, I don't know if anyone in the room has got experience of that, but I would just, I would always recommend have a look at both of them and then just find according to what you're trying to achieve pedagogically choose the best tool for the job but i think they're similar uh, uh, jane uh, basner talks a lot about yeah, uh yeah, that doesn't she i'll see if i find her blog and then i can send mm -hmm. the link does yeah, anybody else a, anybody yeah, else? So, oh sorry well i'm sorry oh, you had them no no you well, okay. Well, I was, just, I was just, I was just saying, you know, you could have a Twitter conversation about that as well. I think that we haven't got anyone in the room, maybe that that um, has experience of both or have used both. But certainly, uh, in the states, I've seen that discussion a lot about comparing Nearpod and Pear Deck. And um, I would, uh, yeah, I would, I, I would. I, mean, I don't know if you've done a search for Pear Deck versus Nearpod on YouTube, but there'll be, I'm sure, there'll be tutorials. Um, I think that the drawing feature. Um, I think in Pear Deck you have to pay for, though you've got the flashcards, um, flashcard factory option, which you can do without paying, which is which is around drawing. And then I think Nearpod one you have to pay for. But if you watch Guillaume's uh, presentation and then get in contact with her as well, she'll be able to, I'm sure, clarify with you um, the, the main differences. As you say, if you do a search, actually, I've just done a search there, and there, were, there are people who will tell you what they think too. There we are. So there we are. Just yeah, I've seen that debate a few times. So um, yeah, there we are. Lovely. Any any other questions or comments or anything else? Julia, were you did did you say you could share something with us? Uh, I did, uh, but further up, I, um, ah. I made another video just with some more ideas for uh, genially kind of beyond the basics. So mm -hmm. you kind of need to watch Carmen's presentation first, mm -hmm. then my advanced ideas, and then this webinar for the escape stuff. And <laughs> um, that would be the best order, I think. Yeah, and you'd be good to go then. You'll be an, uh, yeah. a, 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 then a power the user. Yeah, expert of genially. Yeah, <laughs> I can share it again. How close is, are you managing to get to, to finishing your book, Julia? Well, Every time I think I'm finished, I find more stuff. <laughs> no, I'm kind of nearly ed entering the editing stage, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, so the main writing is done. Uh, also, I have to be quick now because there's so many books on the topic coming out every week. I need to <laughs> get in there first um, because it's such a popular topic now with teachers. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants a book about escape room. So, yeah, I'll try to do it quickly. And yours is going to be generally, isn't it, for lots of subjects, for any subject? Yeah, it's not going to be subject specific. The, the kind of the unique selling point will be that it will have lots of <laughs> templates in it. So for Genially, but also for PowerPoint and Google. And I'm going to explain what Natasha said earlier, how to do the Google form thing, but also talk a bit about like physical escape rooms and lots of different puzzles, basically. Ideas for puzzles, how to use them and the downloadable version of them basically mm -hmm. so that's Sounds that's great. the idea yeah um, <laughs> but Amazing. editing it is scary <laughs> <laughs> cool well maybe on that point we should we should wrap up helen what do you think but i think that's that's yeah. a given us a nice taste there's something to look forward to because i think in a way we've sort of done everything around escape rooms we could possibly do really. we've done the basics we've done the advanced we've done the uh, the, the possibility of a book coming out. I think we've done everything we could do around oh. escape room. So it's a, been a brilliant collaborative effort. So well yeah. done, everyone. And the only thing to remain is that we are going to do an escape room together. Of course, yeah. Collaborative. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. We could use our breakout room feature, couldn't we? Mm -hmm. Or I'm sure it would be lovely to make to to replicate. Well, okay, we might do it with the kids. Well, but you definitely um, need to do a, an audio escape room because that is easy to do over Zoom. Right. And we. We need to organize it. We'll I'm happy that. to be the uh, game master because oh, yeah. I know all the answers already because I've listened to them all. So <laughs> I always have to be the game master. But and how, how many uh, people would you have? I mean, is it something we'd have to limit the numbers or could we? Use yeah, what, what? I would say over five, five to ten maximum, I would say. But then presumably I mean, everyone I'd else play... could then listen, couldn't they? You could have like people actively yeah, playing, but other can, people just yeah. listening. You could, yeah. 
he can listen. I mean, as many people as one can play, really, it's just then more difficult to organize who's going to say the next, the next thing. So, I mean, I normally play it with three friends, which is quite a good number, because then when one gets stuck, the next one will come in and we kind of try to take turns, but if someone has a good idea, then obviously you can say it. Um, I've played it with eight of my colleagues at the beginning of lockdown when everybody was lonely, <laughs> which was quite good to see the connections weren't quite so good. And then, yeah, um, it's difficult when you can't see each other properly because then you don't know who wants to speak next and so on, as we all know now after lockdown. <laughs> so, um, yeah, smaller groups, I would say. But um, yeah, everybody can listen to Escape This Podcast. I can put in a link as well. Uh -huh. uh, they're really fun and you can just guess along with them really, or their guests when they, when they do it. And I've got lots, lots and lots of episodes. I can check this. And I more. suppose that's the idea behind what Graham has. Um, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. What Graham Graham's said. Stanley. Yeah. With yeah. A story. Yeah. And it's kind of similar to that. Story. Yeah. Well, the, good, the, the whole reason why I got into this really playing it online was because um, one of my friends is blind and he can't do a real escape room. But he discovered this podcast, so he was looking for people online to play it with him. And then that's how we all started. So we actually have one person in Canada, me in England, one person in Germany, and one in Macedonia. And we just, wow. yeah, we just do it love international, it. really, which is quite cool. Yeah. I'd love to do that. And the podcast is from Australia, so it literally goes all the way around the world. Because <laughs> you can see my room, I've got all oh, these wow. games. I love playing games, but I've got nobody to play them with. Yeah. Aww. My husband Aww. hates escape rooms, ironically, so <laughs> I never have anyone to play them with. <laughs> I'll never forget um, Helen being stuck in the fridge uh, in, in your example, Julia, do you remember? <laughs> Having to use her German to get out, that was amazing. And, and getting lots of help from everyone watching as well, that was really amazing. <laughs> I'm stuck in a fridge! It was great. <laughs> yeah. Did I have to go up to the top, I think, didn't I, or something? So That was great. But the amount of language that came out of that as well, because I think that's where sometimes with these things you tend to think, mm, all of this, but how much language is going to come out? But yeah. really... I mean, particularly with people who are keen and know that they've got to play the game and do it in the language. And, and, it's, and that's when you really embed this language thing. I mean, all of these, the drills are fine for just practicing pronunciation, that sort of thing, but I don't think it always stays in. But if you play a game and you needed a particular phrase to win, that, that sticks, doesn't it? Um... That was the, that's the difficult bit about writing my book with all the puzzle ideas, because there's so many ideas you can do with escape rooms, but making them educational is the hard part. And yeah. how do you link it with subject content? Um, so that's yeah, what I've tried to do for each one to come up. How, how can you put in words or whatever, even if it's a maze or whatever puzzle you have, mm -hmm. um, how can you link it up? I mean, the, the one that I've just been doing, this is giving it away for anybody who's going to try this French one. Oh, no. <laughs> is that the whole... Um, the butler did it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but for, for everything, and this seems to me a good idea to me, they use Wikipedia is the reference. Hmm. The idea being that you don't go anywhere else on the internet to find it, you know, information, because otherwise it will be different depending on where you go. So the whole thing is you've got to look into Wikipedia. So one of the things is you have to... It actually says you've got to find the family name of a particular animal, but in Latin. Yes, I've seen, I've done that bit. I, oh, I got stuck. <laughs> you know, I got stuck. <laughs> and that was where, but I found that I was getting the, the name of the type of animal, but I wasn't actually doing the, the family of it or something. Anyway, in, in the end, I managed to do it. And it is, it's, it still will stay with me forever. The, the actual feeling of, elation that i'd worked out where those seven letter words went on the you know and how the the watch comes in useful you have to know where the watch is and oh but not much yeah i suppose i'm not so sure how much language would, would come in a lot of it a lot of the thinking was thinking in english what on earth's going on here mm. <laughs> did you all know this website I just posted it's also french teachers uh but I have some cool ones for learning English, which I've played. <laughs> They're the only ones I can do. <laughs> but the other's all French. Um, there's a really cool Alice in Wonderland one, which just has Ooh. amazing um, graphics. And they all use uh, Genially as well. Oh, I don't know this one. I, I send you the, the um, Alice in Wonderland one. Um, and you can see if you can escape Wonderland. Get out of the rabbit hole. 
that one that's quite cool right? really lends itself to so much doesn't it in second life there's a lot on alice in wonderland and i've got an alice in wonderland costume and a red queen quest costume <laughs> Uh, yeah, Alice in Numberland, that's what it's called. Oh, thank you, that. Can I just say thank you to Jo and Helen for all the amazing webinars and to Marie for having me with her. Um, it's been really, really fascinating learning from everybody. And can I just also say a really close friend of mine, Paula, is listening in. And Paula and I talk together in Belgium. She's a linguist and she's written a few comments. She's just starting out as an MFL teacher starting in September. So I think for people like Paula just starting out, these webinars are fantastic, just giving an insight into all the amazing things going on. And also, like Paula said in the comments about um, the way everyone's collaborating and the, and the beauty of that. So welcome, Paula. With a but too shy to yeah, shift webcam. Oh, there we are, Paula. Oh, very cool. <laughs> Paula has been a teacher, though, of sorts. She's, um, I, I met her as, um, she was a management trainer um, so and consultant, well, aren't you, Paula? So um, it's not, like, entirely new in that sense, is it? Well, it feels very scary and very new, and I am so impressed by everybody. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, I've got so much to learn. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, but there's the, oh, you can watch all you know all fifty of the uh, fifty one of the tilt webinars and that will give you you know masses and masses of ideas. We need another lockdown then, Joe. <laughs> uh, well, but then but the same thing. It's all about the community. If you just yeah reach out into the community, um, and there'll be people who will help and support, and it's lovely for everyone yeah, to come. Sign together, up to like, MFL Twitterati and you'll be fine. Absolutely, yeah, you'll be fine. Oh, you. And A double L as well. And A double L, of course, of course. Because I think in a way you are seeing sometimes it can be a bit daunting. On the webinars because we are seeing the creme de la creme to be we must be honest about this i mm. mean the people who are presenting are the people who put, spent some time getting to know it so one of our first webinars we had didn't we jane basnett talking about microsoft who just mm -hmm. she's already at, right at the top of her game she's mm. you know a, 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 an educator but people are just so willing to help the rest of us yeah. and it's the idea there's the thing i always say about joe that's fantastic he does do all of this work for us but he's always there giving the after service care so that if there's something you're not sure of, you can just put Even during his holidays. <laughs> yeah, well, just about, yeah. Yeah, I did have a whole week off, sort of. No, I did have a week off, but I was in the... As you would have known if you come along on Tuesday, I was in the evening, I was um, researching how to reduce the reverb in your, your room with a mobile phone. That's really good. But, yeah, but anyway, but anyway... But um, yeah, as, as, as Helen, I just, I see it as a bit of a hobby, but of, at the same time, yeah, obviously it's a very serious situation, this, and, and if I can help, I think it's all about everyone stepping up and, and my particular skill set, I think, lends itself well to helping as many people as possible. And yeah, it's my pleasure mm -hmm. to do that. No, it's really good. Well, on that note, Joe, thank you so much. And I thought, well, again, I'm still recording this. I shall stop the recording. <laughs> cool. Now, there are we, stop recording. Thank you for having us.